I'd like to call to order the first meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for today. Thank you, Mayor. I hope our achievements in life shall be these, that we will have fought for what was right and fair, that we will have risked for that which mattered, that we will have given help to those who were in need, that we will have left the earth a better place for what we've done and who we've been. Thank you very much. Next is a roll call. There are 15, 14 present, I'm sorry, 14 present. Alderman Donahue and Alderman Van Akron are excused. Next, I'd like to uh, call on the Sheboygan Police Department's Honor Guard for presentation of the national colors. Please stand. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Give a hand to the honor guard. Next, I'd like to call on the musical group HHT Quartet to come and give us a patriotic song.
Gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. Next, I'd like to call on Pastor Andy Hopp, pastor at Zion Evangelical Covenant Church, for an invocation. Andy also serves as chairman of our Police and Fire Commission, and we're grateful to have his help on that group. Honorable Mayor Vandersteen, Clerk Richards, Attorney Adams, distinguished members of the Common Council, esteemed chiefs and city officials, friends, family, and fellow citizens. It is truly a privilege for me to invite you to join me in a prayer of invocation as we give thanks to God for his blessing on our city and ask him to continue to bless us through all of you. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we truly do thank and praise you, for it is a wonderful blessing that we can live here in this great city of Sheboygan. We have so much to be thankful for, and tonight we are especially thankful to you for these men and women who have been elected and appointed to serve all of us who live and work here in Sheboygan. Heavenly Father, we ask that you help and guide all who are in these chambers tonight. And through your presence and your power, we ask that they always aspire to have the wisdom like Solomon, that by your presence they might truly understand the people the way Moses understood your people, and that by your great grace they might be able to have the very character and servant heart of Jesus so that together they might serve us all with humility and in great grace. Loving God, we pray that you bless and guide each and every one here and help them to stay always strong in their convictions, but also help them to be open to listen and to hear the opinions of others. Help them to always desire to speak the truth, but to do as you command, to speak the truth in love. And when there is disagreement, dear God, and we know there will be, we ask that you help them to treat each other with respect and with honor. Bless and guide everyone here that they can always remember that they all share the same goal, your goal and purpose, and that is to truly seek what is best for each and every citizen of this great place by a great lake. You have blessed everyone here with a great variety of gifts and talents, and so we trust and we ask that you continue to bless all of us through these men and women. Keep them safe, guard their hearts and minds, watch over their health, and may they always find the joy in the work they do in serving us, understanding it is for your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Hobb. Uh, next, uh, we have a new um, person up here at the head table, and I'd like to introduce the, the new Deputy City Clerk, Meredith De Bruin. Meredith? <laughs> next item is the uh, swearing in of the City Clerk elect. Repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Susan Richards. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge. And will faithfully and impartially discharge. The duties of the Office of City Clerk. The duties of the Office of City Clerk. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. And the next, uh, we will swear in the new city attorney elect, Charles Adams. I always do it from this side, not from the other way. Okay, <laughs> raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, please state your name. I, Charles Adams. 
Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. <clears throat> and will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of city attorney. Of the office of city attorney. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> And then next, we'd like to have our newly elected aldermen all come forward. Please come behind the desk uh, to be sworn in. Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of older person. The office of older person. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, gentlemen. The next order of business is to adopt the rules of the Common Council. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am moved to adopt the rules of the Common Council. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Is there any discussion on the rules? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is the election of the President and Vice President of the Common Council. <coughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first election of the President of the Council. Uh, I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Nominations are then received from the floor. And let's see, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to nominate all the person Don Hammond for Office of President. Thank you very much. Alderman Heideman. Yeah. I'd, like uh, I'd like to nominate Alderman Bellinger. We need a second on the first, first one first. Second. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. And then we have Alderman Heideman uh, nominating Alderman Thiel. We need a second on that. Second. Thank you, Alderman Damro. Okay, we have two candidates on the ballot. Is there any other candidates? Is there any other candidates? Is there any other candidates? Then we'll close the nominations and ballots will be distributed. <clears throat> All the persons, can you please print your name so we can read what you voted? Thank you.
I think I'm going to tell myself I'm going to have some jokes prepared for this piece at the point in time. <laughs> See the Packers are playing on Thanksgiving night? In the council president for the next year is Alderman Don Hammond. Congratulations, Don. And Bill, thanks for your efforts. <laughs> next is um, election of the vice president of the common council, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot. And if there are more than two candidates, <clears throat> if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to nominate Alderperson uh, Mary Lynn Donahue. Sure. Thank you very much. Second. Alderman Hammond. No. Yeah, second back here. Jody. Alderman Jody. Vanderweel. Okay, that's a second. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to nominate Alderperson John Bellinger. Second. Thank you very much. And Alderman Bourne is a second. Are there any other nominations? Except the motion to close? So moved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. We will distribute the ballots. <clears throat> Sue, can you read my writing? No.
The Common Council Vice President for the next term is Alderman John Bellinger. Congratulations. Congratulations, John. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the election of the representative on the City Planning Commission, <laughs> the representative on the Board of Contractor Examiners, and two representatives on the Capital Improvements Commission. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, do we want to do them all together or start with? Please do them all together. Fair enough. Separate. All right. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. Okay. Nominations are open then for the um, Planning Commission member, Alderman Bellinger. I mean, Alderman Boren, did you have? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to nominate Alderman John Bellinger for the City Plan Commission. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Are there any other nominations for the Planning Commission? Alderman Lassard? Yes, I'd like to nominate Brian Bitters. Second. Okay, thank you for that motion and support and the nomination. Are there any other nominations? <clears throat> Alderman Lassard, we got you. Okay. I can take a motion to close nominations Double. for city plan. Okay. We'll distribute the ballots. And the results are in. Alderman Bellinger, congratulations on the position on the City Planning Commission. <laughs> Next, move on to the Board of Contract Examiners. Are there any nominations for the Board of Contract Examiners? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to uh, nominate all the persons Susie Lassard. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Is, are there any other nominations for Board of Contract Examiners? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, move to close the nominations and direct the city clerk to cast a unanimous ballot for Susie Lassard. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion passes. Congratulations, Alderman Nassar. <laughs> Next, we'll have nominations for two representatives on the Capital Improvements Commission. Nominations are open. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to uh, nominate Alderperson Bill Thiel for Capital Improvements. Second. Thank you for that uh, nomination. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm non I nominate Alderman Jim Bourne. Second. second. Thank you very much for that nomination and second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to close nominations and direct the city clerk to cast a unanimous ballot for all the person Jim Bourne and all the person Bill Thiel. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> now we'll have a short recess for the election of the Committee of the Whole Chairman. Different view, isn't it, Mike? <laughs> All right, we'll start out. We'll uh, open the floor to nominations. Um, Alderperson Carlson. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot. And if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Is there a second? Second. Billy. All right, nominations are open. Um, let's see, Alderperson Bellinger. Second. Okay. There's a motion and multiple seconds. Multiple seconds. Um, any other nominations from the floor? Any other nominations from the floor? Going three times. Alderperson Carlson. Thank you, Chairman. I move to close nominations and direct the city attorney to cast a unanimous, unanimous ballot for Daryl Carlson. <laughs> Is there a second? <laughs> All right, there's a motion and multiple seconds again. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Carries. Thank you. It's fun up here. Okay, we'll re reconvene and ask for the council president to report on the election of the committee of the whole chairperson. <laughs> A big surprise. Um, congratulations, other person Carlson. Thank you. Next, we'd like to call on the council president for a message for the year. Good evening, everybody. I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation and gratitude, uh, first to the great people of the 7th District for their vote and opportunity to serve this great city, to my fellow council members who elected, uh, elected me to serve as president. As before, my commitment to you is to continue to represent this body with honor, vision, and, in the <coughs> best, um, and with the city's best interest in heart and mind. To the city staff, your tireless, effort, your tireless and often underappreciated work has helped move Sheboygan forward and will be instru instrumental to the future success of Sheboygan. Please know that your efforts are appreciated. To Attorney McLean, is he here? Nope. Oh, I'll take the joke out then. <coughs> I appreciate your advice and friendship. You've been a great resource for this body and for me. I wish you the best in retirement and look forward to to having a beer as non-elected officials someday. Um, to my wife and kids, who I believe are watching at home and hope my kids have their homework done.
That's what happens when you do these on a train on the way here. Since 2010, Since 2010, they have supported my efforts, often at great inconvenience. You see, I have this character flaw like many of you that requires me to give my all into everything I do. <laughs> they have tolerated the many meetings which have taken me away from dinner, playtime, and evening and school events with almost no complaints. I am proud of them for what they have dealt with, the good and the bad, and assure them that soon the only chamber I will be frequently frequenting on Monday nights is our living room. Last year has been a transformation has been trans has been transformational for Sheboygan. Now we'll get back on track. From economic development to community initiatives, the efforts of the past year will positively impact Sheboygan for generations to come. Despite the rhetoric of, of a few of the past couple months, the city has much to be proud of. While the community as a whole may not always see the successes, I assure you there have been many. Revitalization of Erie Avenue with our partners at Habitat for Humanity. This effort has begun to re-energize a neighborhood looking for a reason to be proud again. Tourism continues to strengthen. In fact, 2014, in, in fact, 2014 generated the highest level of room tax collections in the city's history. Additionally, we submitted and had approved a marine sanctuary proposal to NOAA. Creation and implementation of a master plan for our downtown with our partners from the bid, Harper Center Bid Improvement District. This plan recognizes our changing demographics and addresses key needs including housing for young professionals and necessity to have vibrant arts, culture, and entertainment district to attract and retain a quality workforce. To that end, redevelopment efforts for the former Boston store. We saw the vision of what our downtown could be and this body took action by seizing the opportunity to acquire this property when the Boston store vacated. Contrary to some, this effort is not for the 1% of the community. This, this vision will benefit all. We'll provide green space in our downtown. We'll provide increased tax base. We'll provide amenities and housing for the changing demographics of our workforce and help promote the downtown's vision as a place for arts, culture, entertainment, and entertainment for all citizens and visitors alike. New development is happening all around us. Although we can't take credit for all of it, it, demonstrates, it does demonstrate that our business community believes in Sheboygan as a great place for business. Just look around. Acuity, Polyfab, NEMAC, Align Energy, and several others in various stages of the process. 2015, once again, will provide another opportunity to show off Sheboygan when we host the 2015 PGA Championship at Whistling Straits in August. For non-golfers, this major is one of the most widely watched tournaments of the golf season and can boost the status of the area on a national and international stage. However, I recognize that all is not rosy. The city faces challenges as well. Workforce development continues to be an issue. Many of our great employers would like to expand. However, there's just not enough qualified labor to meet that demand. This could, hopefully won't, result in our employers looking elsewhere to grow and expand. There are several initiatives ongoing to address this issue, including leaders from the city, school district, LTC, the chamber, SCEDC, and our business community. Harsh winters continue to wreak havoc on our roads and bridges. Over the last several years, we have continued to make uh, fixes, make, to continue to make fixing our roads a priority have a plan to do so and have made progress. Last year, DPW completed over 80 different road projects and invested over a million dollars in street sanitary and sidewalk reconstruction. However, we recognize that there's more to be done. Our budget will continue to be a challenge. However, we are making strides there as well. Over time, we are, we are leveraging federal and state monies to make each city dollar go further from capital improvements to economic development. 
We are working with our business, with business and developers along with our partners at the SCEDC to encourage new development and expansion to grow our tax base. We continue to lower our debt, which reduces our interest payments. In fact, at $35 million, we are at the lowest level since 1992. These challenges did not develop overnight, nor will they be fixed overnight. However, together we'll continue to implement strategies to address them. Over the, la over the year, this body has been vocally criticized by a few on topics such as the Armory Development, Aurora Development, and the Boston Store Redevelopment, to name a few. And while I welcome and appreciate constructive input from the community, unfortunately, unfortunately many of you have been subjected to conduct that I can only consider shameful from name-calling to outright threats. These people proudly brag on Facebook and social media about their antics, believing that others will be impressed. I assure you, that is not the case. There is no place in the public discourse of this great city for this type of conduct, and I would su suggest to those that believe this to be appropriate to run for office. Put yourself in the shoes of these fine citizens who have essentially volunteered their time to make this community a great place to live, work, and play with an eye to its cherished history and a vision for the future. Theodore Roosevelt once said, and those that know me well know this is my favorite quote, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there's no effort without error or shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great <coughs> devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows, knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly? So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, I give each of you credit for entering that arena for little or no personal gain, just a desire to see your community grow and prosper. We may not always agree. The debate will be rigorous, but please know that I'm proud and honored to be in the arena with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman Hammond. Next, we'll move on to the Committee of the Whole Chairperson's message. Alderman Carlson. All right, this is a different view from up here. Um, I too want to thank the residents of the third district. This will be my uh, third term here in the city council. I'm quite humbled to be here uh, for this long. I also want to thank my fellow, fellow alder persons, past and um, current. Um, we've got a good group here. Uh, I also want to thank the city staff, um, Chad, Jem, the mayor, Sue, the new city attorney, and the former city attorney, to name a few. We've got a really great staff here. They work really hard to do uh, the great things that are going on in the city. And last but not least, my family. Um, as, as with Alderman Hammond, um, our families make a lot of sacrifices, especially <coughs> those of us with little kids. I've got two little girls, and they're, they're always wondering um, um, how long meetings are going to last, so it's not always easy. Um, I'm going to start with a quote that we actually just voted. It was part of the document that we voted on tonight uh, as part of our rules. And I think maybe short of foreign policy or military policy, this quote is pretty much spot on when it comes to city government. And the quote goes as follows. I think local government is the hardest job in the country because it is the one thing to be at the federal level where you can talk about grand thoughts, talk about things in policy terms, and encourage legislation that channels your decision making into certain goals. It is another thing to pick up the garbage, to plow the snow, to sweep the street, and to make sure your signal lights are working. Local government is really hard. That is where the rubber meets the road and is much harder than the federal government, a quote by Pauline A. Schneider. And I think that's pretty spot on. We, we make 
Every decision we make here in these chambers affects somebody in this town individually and every single thing we do. And I think it's pretty important. I think people take that for granted. We have some challenges ahead of us in the next few weeks and months, but more importantly, we have the opportunity to make significant improvements to our city, and I, for one, am looking for it, hence the reason why I'm back for a third term. We've got great leadership in place, both in the mayor's office and in the city administrator's office, and as well as our re-elected president and our, and our new vice president. In addition, we've added a few new, um, albeit familiar faces to our council. Um, welcome, Eldon and Job. Um, I'm excited for what we're going to be able to accomplish over the next year. I implore everyone to stay engaged and informed on the issues that will be coming before us and be active in our discussions. We've got a diverse group of individuals with all sorts of skill sets, and I know it will keep us moving in the right direction. Let's make it a point to continue looking downrange at the bigger picture, at the greater good for the city of Sheboygan. We've, once again, we've got a lot of good things happen, happening, and we need to continue that trend. To keep it short, I'll show my philosophy on the committee of the whole meetings. As with Alder Person Donahue, I do not believe we should just have meetings to have meetings. Committee of the whole is only going to be used to discuss pertinent issues, issues such as the budget and long-term planning. Once again, I look forward to that. Thank you for the opportunity to serve as the vice president for the past three years, I believe, and thank you for the opportunity to be the uh, committee of the whole chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman Carlson. Next, we'll go on to the public forum. City Clerk. <clears throat> All right. First on our list this evening is Debbie Ronk. Is Debbie here? No. Okay. Second on our list, how about Michelle? Michelle Calwartz? All right, Bob, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, can you state your name and home address, please? Certainly. My name is Bob Heck. I live at 1720 Elm Avenue here in Sheboygan. And you will have uh, five minutes, sir. Thank you. I was kind of expecting to have a few more minutes to gather my thoughts, but here I am, so that's fine. Sorry. No, no problem at all. You can't help it. People don't come and use this opportunity. I first want to start out by thanking all the members of the Common Council for the service you provide this city. Uh, I've lived in this community for 55 of the 60 years I've been on this earth. And um, I will be honest, I've never been real involved in city government. Um, March 16th was the first time I ever entered this room. Never been to a common council meeting before. And I think everyone knows what got me here. And that was the issue that we've all been talking to death in this community right now. And that's the field of dreams. But I've gained an appreciation for the jobs all of you do. Whether you agree with my position or you don't, you're here to serve, you're stepping up to the plate, and you're doing a very selfless thing, and I appreciate that, and I mean that sincerely. Um, and I look forward to, I've spoken to the mayor, and uh, it looks like I'm gonna have an opportunity to be part of a committee as a citizen, and I appreciate that opportunity too. Um, my wife has pointed out to me that it's often actually better to go and do something than just talk about doing something. And so I appreciate that opportunity. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit tonight, if I could, about the Milwaukee Brewers and Miller Park and a man named George P. Tack. In 1995, George P. Tack was a state senator representing Racine and Kenosha areas. And at that time, they were debating the construction of Miller Park and the financing of Miller Park in the state senate. And everyone pretty much knew that without Miller Park, the brewers were going to leave Milwaukee. And yet it was a very politically contentious issue. And uh, it was debated in the state senate. They took a vote. Mr. Petak voted no because the residents in Racine County in his district did not want to be subjected to a one-tenth of one percent stadium tax or a sales tax. And so he stuck with his constituents' views. And there was more debate. 
and they took another vote, and once again, Mr. Petak voted no. And yet the supporters of the stadium continued, and the debate went on into the night. And they looked for ways for Mr. Petak uh, so that he could vote yes, which he wanted to do, but he wanted to represent his constituents also. But in the end, in the very early morning hours of October 6, 1995, George P. Tack, in a moment of what I would call both political courage and clarity, saw what needed to be done. He changed his vote and he voted yes to build Miller Park. And that stadium stands today as his legacy. And I don't know how many people think about it, but when I go to Miller Park, I think of George P. Tack. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, that vote cost George P. Tack his Senate seat. He paid a political price, but he's never regretted the vote he made. Now, we have a, we're not building Miller Park here in Sheboygan, but we are trying to build a surgical center within the city limits, and we are trying to uh, put together an athletic complex on the south side. And we're trying to do something good for this community. I think everybody wants to do something good for this community. The proposal on the table that Aurora's put forth involves millions of dollars for the citizens of this community, and it's not tax dollars. It's private money. It's $2.5 million for the Sheboygan Area School District. It's $2.233 million toward the Boots and Complex. It's tax revenue. There are estimates $200,000, $300,000 a year, but there's significant tax revenue connected with building this facility within city limits. And Aurora's been clear that without the rezoning vote that you're gonna be making on April 29th, they're going to leave the city limits and locate somewhere outside of the city limits. I want all of you in this room, I realize that based on the Sheboygan Press article I read, there's 11 votes or 11 people leaning toward yes or yes, and we need one more. And I would like to urge everyone in this room those committed to vote yes and those who are still thinking about what they're going to do, to have a George P. Tag moment and to say that you're going to vote for what's good for this community, what's good for the community as a whole, even if that means it's going to upset some people even in your own districts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Uh, next I have Catherine. Is Catherine here, Colas? I know Gerald's here. Gerald, it's your turn. <coughs> and Gerald, can I have your name and full address, please? My name is Gerald Kloster. I live at 1638 Division Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Thanks, and you will have five minutes. Sir. I've lived on that street for over 30 years. I back out of my street, and I'm back in... <coughs> Out of my, rather, when I'm back out of my driveway, I'm backing into holes that are three to four inches deep, that have sharp concrete, that have blacktop popping out, which I have on the desk over there, that I just picked up today after the city had come and cleaned up what I had already cleaned up. Now, I don't think the the council over the past years or prior council has done anything for our inner structure in our city. My cars are going the heck. My wife's new Subaru has rattles in because of that street. There's basins that are sticking up. Cement is broken away from them. The patches have broken away. So I think you need to concentrate on our inner structure a lot better than you have in the past. Now, I might, you aldermen and older ladies, excuse me, I'm not, I'm kind of nervous up here. I think maybe you people can fix this because prior ones have not. Mayors, you have not taken and you have not done that job for the citizens of Sheboygan. And as far as that ball diamond, 
what is it going to cost us to relocate all these facilities in these two different areas? That's going to cost taxpayers money for roads and infrastructure. That stuff could be paid on put into our streets. And as far as this Act 10 is a hurting the city, I'm going to go to the depression on city workers down at City Hall. We had one person take his life because of denial of workmen's comp. There has to be a better job done. You affected somebody's family. Act 10 is hurting this city and our state. You need to talk to the Mr. Walker about it, what's happening in the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald. That's it for public forum. Thank you very much. Uh, next is the mayor's appointments. Uh, you'll find those documents before you tonight. Pursuant to section 277 in municipal code, standing committee assignments are made by the mayor on April 21st and subject to confirmation by the full council on April uh, 27th. The code further states that the mayor's responsibility is to make appointments that will best serve the interests of the city of Sheboygan. To assist me in that process, I asked all of you to rank your committee preferences, and I made every effort to take those preferences into consideration for the standing committee appointments. I have prepared tonight and present for your consideration uh, this list. Under the municipal code, each older person shall be appointed to at least one committee, but not more than two standing committees. In addition to the list of appointments for the standing committees, I've shared the committee preference spreadsheet with the rankings of all the older persons. I'm happy to report that 11 of the 15 older persons received their first choice for a committee appointment. Three of the 15 older persons have received their second choice and uh, one received a third choice. I trust that you as common council members will agree that these assignments and elections held, uh, held tonight in the positions for the city of Sheboygan and it positions us for successful council year in the coming year. And those appointments will lie over until our meeting on the 27th. Chuck, Mr. Reed. Chuck, would you please proceed? To the honorable members of the common council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation. Finance Committee, Don Hammond, Chairman, Julie Koth, Vice Chairman, Daryl Carlson, Mary Lynn Donahue, Eldon Berg. Public Protection and Safety, Daryl Carlson, Chairman, Michael Damro, Vice Chairman, John Bellinger, Bill Field, Susan Lassard. Public Works, John Bellinger, Chairman, Bill Field, Vice Chairman, Jim Boren, Brian Bitters, Joe Jose. Salaries and Grievances, Mary Lynn Donahue, Chairman, Joe Heideman, Vice Chairman, Julie Koth, Don Hammond, Jim Boren. And Law and Licensing, Jody Vanderweel, Chairman, Susan Lassard, Vice Chairman, David Van Akron, Mark Herman, and Eldon Berg. Thank you very much. Those will lie over till the 27th. Additionally, there are various appointments to the uh, other boards and uh, committees as well. I'm not going to read all of those. And then one more, uh, honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Larry Samet to be considered for the appointment to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners to fill the unexpired term of Val Schultz, whose term expires April 25, 2016, and Todd Wolf to be considered for appointment to the City Plan Commission to fill the unexpired term of Jose Araujo, whose term expires April 27, 2017. Okay, thank you. Well, it's great to be here with all of you tonight as we start a new council year. There's a lot of enthusiasm, and, uh, and we, we, we look for many great things to happen in Sheboygan. A lot of people are talking about the progress that we've had, and I'm proud and enthusiastic about Sheboygan's future. Millions of dollars in construction are, is currently underway, and people are starting to really notice the face of Sheboygan is changing. 
Acuity, Polyfab, Plenco, NEMAC, Seco Polymers, and Alliant Energy are all working on plant and office expansions. Becknell Industries will is soon going to be break ground on a manufacturing plant on the southwest side of Sheboygan, and we're looking forward to that. The city has always had a strong manufacturing base of employment. In fact, recently the Bureau of Labor Certificate, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, identified Sheboygan for the high percentage of the population that is employed in manufacturing. We have 33.1 percent of our population of adult residents employed in manufacturing, and that's tied for the third highest percentage in the nation of any city. It's quite, a, quite an accomplishment. Over the last year, Sheboygan's unemployment rate has dropped from 6.4% down to 4.8%, and new data is due tomorrow, and I'm looking for further improvement in those numbers. This year, the Sheboygan, this year in Sheboygan County, there were over 1,900 more employees earning paychecks than last year. Across Sheboygan County, there are 1,333 manufacturing jobs that are currently open. Manufacturers are looking for more skilled workers than are currently available. And the city is working with our partners on the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation and the Sheboygan Chamber of Commerce to address this workforce development challenge. The Sheboygan Area School District has also stepped up and responded. They work with area manufacturers to develop curriculum to train students for future manufacturing jobs that are needed by the workers of tomorrow. Their ambitious plans are to establish the Red Raider Manufacturing and start students on a path to be trained for manufacturing positions. This will be done at both North and South Highs in the future. With these partnerships, Sheboygan is poised to, to be and stay one of the strongest economies in Wisconsin. And LTC has also opened new facilities to retrain workers that want to gain the skills to fill the available manufacturing positions. Our downtown and harbor center is reestablishing itself as the heart of our great city. We worked with the business owners to, in this area to draft a master plan to guide the future development in this area. These efforts have seen great cooperation. The John Michael Kohler Art Center, the Mead Library, the Wild PAC, and the Above and Beyond Children's Museum are the cultural attractions that draw the majority of the traffic into the center of this business district. Once there, dining, offices, hospitality, and shopping are the additional attractions that make this mixed-use development work. We have enhanced the connectivity with new wayfinding signage for the motorists and the pedestrians and added the Harbor Center Express to provide good traffic circulation. This area will soon be going through a rebranding and remarketing campaign. Look forward for more flowers and banners to enhance the looks in the downtown Harbor Center. The city planning has been meeting with developers to find the best development to replace the buildings on the old Boston store site. But until that happens, we will use this area to, to host a new series of concerts every Thursday night from late June to early September. They really want to make Sheboygan's downtown the place to be on Thursday nights this season. It was great news to recently hear of the purchase of Memorial Mall by Meyer Foods. We look forward to working with this company as they revitalize the retail attractions and add their store to this mall. On the South Side Strip Mall, we are also happy to see a new Sears appliance and hardware store locate. And uh, they also have a new business that's taking over the furniture store on the east side of the street, the Dollhouse Dance Studio. The Erie Avenue Corridor is the entrance to our city and is also getting a facelift. With new businesses like the CVS store, uh, remodeled dominoes and additions along with current businesses will again make this one of the busiest corners in Sheboygan. Heading east uh, on Erie Avenue, you can see the progress on the uh, Habitat Housing Replacement Project that's spearheaded by Habitat for Humanity Lakeside. City Planning has partnered with them to revitalize this block in the Gateway neighborhood. Two homes are almost done and four more will soon be built. This will give this block an amazing transformation. Other projects are pending in this neighborhood because of the investment and the change of this partnership and making the, the gateway corridor a, a real gateway to our city. Um, to again, look for better neighborhoods. City planning continues to offer training to landlords. The next training session is gonna be held at the quarry um, at the JC Park 
Prairie View Center on Tuesday, April 28th from 5.30 to 9. If anyone is still interested, there's spots open to participate and they can register with city development. We want Sheboygan to be the safest city. The policy of the Sheboygan Police Department that have produced significant decrease in crime over the years. The department has promoted a neighborhood focus to policing. They're prioritizing their response and dealing with the most important calls on a more timely basis. All calls are addressed, but some will be followed up on by neighborhood assigned officers a few days later. Chief Domagalski reported at the staff meeting today that part one crime stats for the first quarter of 2015 are down from 280 last year to 220 reportable crimes this year. This is a 20% drop in crimes during this period. If these numbers continue to hold up through the rest of the year, we have a chance to see the crime statistics in Sheboygan drop by 40% over the last five to six years. Just an amazing change. Hats off to the chief and his department. The police department recently had all officers participate in crisis intervention training to allow them to better deal with offenders who have been repeating um, interactions with law enforcement. Because of these policies and efforts, Sheboygan is a safer city. This last year, we reviewed and renewed the contract with the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce to manage our tourism program. The tourism marketing continues to be successful and the room taxes have been increasing every year. And with the PGA Championship coming to Sheboygan, this benefit will put us on a national and worldwide exposure. Tourism also has steered the efforts to develop an application to be designated as a NOAA Marine Sanctuary. We've worked with Port Washington, Two Rivers, Manitowoc, the State Historical Association, and the Governor's Office to enhance this ap application's approval potential. The application has gone through the first step, uh, six steps of evaluation and now has been included on the inventory list for future marine sanctuary sites. On May 9th, there's a day of activities planned at the spaceport in Sheboygan to draw attention and provide information on the marine sanctuary project. Jeff Gray, who is the director of the Marine Sanctuary in Thunder Bay, uh, will be presenting uh, a story of the Alpena experience, how they went through the process of forming uh, the, uh, the group there, and they had a couple of referendum votes on it, and now they have a very successful operation that brings over 100,000 visitors to their community every year. Steve Radovan, an avid uh, wreck diver, uh, will present a video and commentary of shipwrecks that he's found in Lake Michigan. And Ellen Brody, the regional NOAA representative from the Sanctuary Division, will also make a presentation to the Chamber of Commerce Friday Forum at the Elks Club at noon. Earlier this year, the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force in the city began an education effort to encourage more recycling in the city. According to the EPA, 34% of municipal solid waste that's generated in 2012 was recycled. In 2014, Sheboygan only recycled 23% of the waste that was generated in Sheboygan. We've got some work to do and we hope that this education campaign will increase the reuse and recycling in Sheboygan. A new brochure was developed to show residents what they can to help uh, increase Sheboygan's recycling and the water department has mailed a brochure to every residence in the city so that it's, and it's also available on our city website. Tonight I've highlighted some of the recent achievements by different departments. I'd like to give the highest praise to all of our department heads and their staff who provide excellent services to our Sheboygan residents. Our vision of the future is to have more effective and efficient government that serves the residents and the businesses of our community. With teamwork and communication at City Hall and between our staff and elected officials, we can continue to be successful. It means having open discussion, active debates, and some compromise to make Sheboygan prosper. I look forward to working with all of you to make this uh, uh, happen in the coming year. And thank you again for all your service to the city. Okay, next we'll go on to reports of officers. Item 2.1 is an RO by the Chief of Police submitting the quarterly report for activities in the period commencing 1.15 through 3.15. That'll be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 
Under resolutions, 3.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond requesting that the mayor reactivate various special committees for the 2015-2016 council year. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution uh, be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 3.2 and 3.3 will be referred to the Finance Committee. And item 4.1 will be referred to the Finance Committee also. And we're up to number five. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to adjourn. This is my second one, or last one, so I'm going to hold out for a second. <laughs> second. Oh Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Stand adjourned.